Redditors who have auditioned for a talent show such as America's Got Talent, The X Factor, ETC, What Goes On Backstage, That We Don't Know About? Not me but a friend of mine, and I imagine it's common knowledge, but I wasn't certain, until I heard it firsthand. My friend was a decent singer, good enough that she earns a living singing. She applied and got, turned down from X Factor. Didn't even get through, to see the judges you see on TV. That means when the really bad people are on the show, they are selected, because they are bad. For laughs. Feels pretty mean spirited to put people up on a stage to laugh at them. I haven't watched anything like that since then. High school, 7 years ago. There was this guy in my year who everybody liked. We'll call him Tom. Tom loved to sing. Every memory I have of this guy is singing, when we are supposed to be quiet in class, or when the teachers was absent for a few minutes. He was a pretty decent singer from what I remember. One day before class started, he announced that he was going to audition for X Factor on Wednesday. Everybody was hyped, and we all knew he was going to boot camp. Thursday he tells us that he auditioned for a pre-jury, and it wasn't recorded. It was with two producers, and one music producer slash manager. He sang Make You Feel My Love by Adele which I know he can sing amazingly. They told him that that was great, and wanted to hear him sing Listen by Beyonce with a little umph. Basically over the top. Tom didn't he was terrible. He couldn't hit the high notes, was off key sometimes. He was surprised when they said he was great. They said things as, it wasn't good, but raw and that is what X Factor is all about. You are like a diamond, that needs to be polished. You got that it. They made a deal with him, that they'll let him pass to the real audition on Friday, if he did listen again. Tom agreed. He was very worried, and did Adele again in front of the real jury. They cut him off, and a different producer pulled Tom to the side. The producer told him, that he was supposed to sing listen. He didn't want to do that song. So they told him that he will get disqualified if he didn't do the song they wanted him to do. He said no, and he had to leave. Tom said he knew that they just wanted to humiliate him, because while he was waiting for his turn, he met some nice but terrible singers that were told they were great by the producers. Basically everybody gets told they are great, and they make these deals, or give you advice how to pass the auditions, however they set them up to fail and get laughed at in front of the real jury. There are big differences between countries, also between different shows. Probably most I can say is common knowledge, but okay. The role of the jury is probably the most fake of the show. Their roles are scripted, their choices are the choices of a group of producers slash editors. That's where they have numerous meetings about, and the stage jury is only involved in the final stage. Of course there's a lot of typecasting involved. The show knows they want to end up with the old rocker, the weird emo kid, the 17 yo female former Yautaba, the gay girl slash boy, the handsome boy next door, and so on. In the final episodes, of course there needs to be a balance between young old, man women, pop more, alternative. Licensing the song is always quite interesting. For the biggest part, contestants who pass the auditions can't sing whatever they want. It has to fit the narrative, and for the biggest part they have to choose songs from a list of pre-licensed songs. F. I. Songs from the Beatles won't be licensed at all. As far as I know the same goes for Bob Dylan and Michael Jackson songs. I had a friend a while ago go and audition for one. I think it was America's Got Talent, not sure though, and he was a very very good singer. Anyway, he went and auditioned, and went through some stuff, and they told him that, while he was good, but they usually take people, that are either absolutely fucking amazing, or absolutely terrible, and he didn't fit into either of those categories. A long time ago, when reality TV was still new, I auditioned to be on the second season of American Idol in New York City. I was told at the audition after not sleeping for two days, so that I could wait in the line, that I had an exceptional voice, but that New York was already booked solid, so I should travel to one of the smaller auditions, and do it all over again, and that they'd be willing to film me for that. I politely turned them down, because I had a job and bills and responsibilities, so I was never on the show. Not long after that, I auditioned for a show called Fame, that only lasted for one season and was looking for a triple threat. I was actually on the first three episodes of this show, which I didn't know about, 
Family who saw the show called and yelled at me for not telling them I was on TV. But I didn't make it very far because the show was completely set up and halfway through the season they brought an actual Broadway person into the competition and unsurprisingly, that person won. I don't even watch reality TV anymore because of these experiences. I worked for America's Got Talent in San Antonio, and one of the people who worked full time on the staff told me that those who just show up to audition have almost zero chance of actually making it in front of the judges. There is a preliminary round that is not filmed for TV where thousands of people show up, and pretty much all the ones that make it through to the TV rounds are people that the show reaches out to themselves. It's mostly people they discover on YouTube. People who just show up randomly have like a 1 over 1 comma 0 0 0 chance of even making it into what people viewing at home think of as the first round. I was invited on Britain's Got Talent as the producers had been scouting and heard of my talent. I'm a martial artist and tricker who spent 3 years on the same team as the famous Jesse Jane McPoland, or as we called her JJ Golden Dragon Hospic Break came from BGT. The production team got in touch in November 2015 and assigned us a contact on the team Sophie. We were offered myself and my performance partner the chance to skip two stages, one to one and local audition, and go straight through to the television audition stage. So we arranged it, they asked for the act we would perform on video. I sent it, they said it would work great however, to surprise the audience we need to change what we wear to make us look like singers, so band tees and skinny jeans. So we went and bought some, I do not like skinny jeans, they don't work with big quads at all. We re-recorded the performance, and sent it in. Then we were asked to fill in the audition questionnaire and contract. Questions included, what is your current relationship status? Did was your upbringing? What's your current relationship with your parents? Have you suffered any losses in family and or friends recently? Filled in and sent off. Our contact on the production team Sophie said everything is fine however my performance partner listed his relationship status as in a relationship and this is not acceptable for the stage personas we need. When we are on the show we must announce we are both single to attract the biggest female audience. No problem we can do that. A month later during mid-December we receive an email telling us our act is no longer good enough, it needs changing, or we will not be allowed on the show. This being the middle of December and the audition being January 11th. Reworking the performance is impossible due to my performance partner being out of the country, and no gyms being open until the week before. We explained this to Sophie, that it would not really be possible to rework the performance as there was not enough time, nor was my counterpart on the country. We heard nothing until the day before the audition, when we received an email from Sophie saying our audition will not go ahead as it is not adequate, and we should get back in touch next year. She was very apologetic, and explained that the production team higher ups are very unreasonable sometimes, and expect the impossible. Usually acts are given 6 months to prepare, and rework however we were only given 1 month. So a year goes by and good old Sophie gets back in touch and mentions our names are still on the list, should we want to apply. Now missing only one stage the 1 to 1 audition, and going to local audition instead of skipping both. I politely declined. I have since found out that a dozen or so of my peers have been approached in the same manner and have had similar experiences. 10 tenths not recommended. To summarize, what you see on television is often at times planned months in advance by the production team, down to minor details such as individuals reasons for being on the show and even their relationship status. I tried out for the X Factor Us season 3 when I was in 8th grade. We went there to a hockey stadium where they held the auditions, and before they let us in the stadium, they made us walk around aimlessly, and then stand in fences like a herd of cattle, while they filmed the overhead shots of all of the people that you see in the auditions. After that, you went inside, they checked you in, and you got a ticket of where to sit. I was on the lower level, in like section 13 or something. They called you down, section by section, where you went into another line, where the ice would be. I was in the first level, and auditioned at dinner time. Everyone had arrived at 6am for the most part. I have no idea how long the people in the nosebleeds waited. After you waited in the line on the ice area, you were put in another line, where you waited for an audition with an individual judge in a three-sided box with black cloth curtains and PVC piping. 
It almost looked like a three-sided shower curtain. In there, they ask you a few basic questions, and then subtly ask if you have a sob story. I sang, and my judge was really nice to me at first, but unfortunately I did not get through. I went to shake her hand after to thank her for her time, and she refused, probably because of a policy, I'm not sure honestly. If you made it through, they give you a golden ticket and you go through exit 1 for more rounds of auditions. If you do not make it through, they cut your wristband and send you through exit 2. I spent around 10 hours watching people in these boxes, and there were definitely some boxes where nobody made it through to the next round. It could be rigged, it might just be luck of the draw, but there were absolutely tents where nobody left through exit 1. My then BF and me attended an audition for d or No Deal, when it was the height of its popularity. Here's a summarized version how it went. Was in line for 8 hours. Only water was given out so me and BF had to alternate to get fast food takeout to eat, while holding our spotline. It wasn't fun. One of the coordinators will come out every now and then to do interviews or rally up the crowd. Not in my line. There were at least 6 sections, but or another section got the whole TV interview and that shot you would see like in AGT where people are waving at the camera from the audition line, which the coordinator instructs the people how to act. They pick people who are loud and outrageous slash quirky. There was this guy that was in front of me that was the perfect deal or no deal contestant type personality. Lots of hooing super preppy and the coordinators kept an eye on him the whole time. Also we were told that we would be asked a question craziest thing you have done. So you literally got picked on the story you tell and how you tell it. Needless to say, I wasn't picked. My BF nearly got picked he was competing with Mr. Preppy guy in front of us. In the end Mr. Preppy guy got into the second round of auditions and evils. While in line I saw a few people who I later saw on TV a few months later on AGT. They are serial auditioners they just audition on everything and everywhere till they get a spot. One lady got a masterful 3 X's from the judges from AGT. I saw her a year later at a local county fair. Auditioning. At the encouragement of numerous friends and family members, I've auditioned for American Idol, X Factor, The Voice Twice, and America's Got Talent. There are several rounds prior to even getting on TV where you have to audition for producers of the show. You have to remember, they're in the business of getting ratings, not making pop stars. And it's mostly a cattle call, so you can't be like everybody else if you want to get picked. You have to stand out to get noticed. A friend of mine got through to the boot camp stage, I think that's what it was slash is called, never watched the show, of X Factor, and did pretty well. He was talented, and was a little different, but for whatever reason Simon Cowell took a dislike to him and this made things a million times more difficult for my friend. Also, behind the scenes, and between takes there was a team who worked for the show whose specific job was to make people cry. Literally they would go round, and ask horrible questions, and put people down to make good TV. Really not a job for nice people. A friend of a friend is in a semi-professional dance group who have done some decent shows over the years. They were paid to go on a talent show by the show's producers. They didn't even make it to the semi-finals because it wasn't part of the producer's plan for them to get far. It just shows how scripted and fake these talent shows are. Show. Britain's Got Talent 